Hi guys, I'm back with a video that I mentioned I was going to do a rendering on. And I've given this concept a name, Mag R. So today, moving forward in the new era, cars are mandate to become electrified. It is in my opinion that the future of sports cars will still for some time remain a hybrid because it's not likely to duplicate the same dynamics and the performance in an electric car that a petrol car can offer you today in terms of reliability, the weight, the weight and power ratio. The performance is not just looking at a straight line and a two, two minute acceleration, but rather a performance and reliability running at 24 hours in Le Mans, or say, you know, being able to uh, being able to have an electric car to outperform an F1. When that day comes around, then perhaps an electric car is ready. But in the meantime, I believe the car purists or the enthusiasts would prefer a hybrid, a petrol engine paired with electric assist. And therefore, leading into the concept of this sketch here, because we are talking about hybrid and electrification or the sustainable language. The common trend of today for sustainability is cleanness, simple clean gestures. So therefore I'm not taking the approach of making it very busy while making a statement. And I've also adopted the idea of sufficient and performance where I found inspiration was the catamaran in the ocean, the wind generates its uh, speed through efficiency. As it reaches a certain speed, it elevates in hydroplanes in the ocean. And on the other hand, it's the hydroplane watercraft. It's powered by an engine, but it's made to go fast. The common thing that they both have is twin hull and a platform on top that connects them. That gave it a very unique performance. Therefore, the concept of this car emulates or resonates with both the hydroplane watercraft and also the catamaran. So as you can see, the bonnet underneath, it feels like a large amount of air can go underneath and through, and there is a platform that connects both left and right hulls basically emulating that through the surfacing here. So the car's gesture is to resonate, emulate with the catamaran as well as the hydroplane watercraft. So that's the basic concept of this approach and to make it timeless. I like to explain that the entire video length would probably be about four hours I mentioned that I was going to do a video to show uh, some of the techniques but I don't think anybody wants to watch a four hour long video or even if I fast forwarded it's uh, about an hour and a half so I would have to break it into a few parts. I am starting with the line import it into Photoshop. As you can see, they're in layers. Now I have reduced the opacity and just blocking in the, the top or the glass area. Usually when I start to do, I think everybody has different techniques out there, <clears throat> but I roughly block in like a solid color. In this case, I'm going to choose like a cool gray and then using the lasso tool to gradually lighten the, the shade on, on the top that's facing upwards. 
and now I am sort of just blocking in like the basic form shading. Uh, there's a different approach, everybody has their own uh, style and techniques. There are quite a few videos out there in, on the internet. <laughs> and if you are just interested in drawing cars or a student of cars design, then why don't you check out everybody's videos? Everyone offers a different type of technique. And so what I start with is getting some of the heavies in, like the shadow tire, so that way roughly I can see the overall form. Um, so now I'm putting in, in path the wheels, but it's just going to be really rough later on. We're going to go back to adjust. And this is sort of a process that you kind of go back and forth, back and forth. Uh, some people have already like a methodology of how they're gonna, they plan out the color, the shading, the sky tone. I actually don't do that. <clears throat> it just, you know, everybody operates different ways. I'm using a lasso tool to roughly mock in the darks, the light, So quickly just kind of shade in the, uh, the top of the bonnet. And here I'm adjusting the tones a little bit more. <laughs> there I'm not gonna be, uh, with, I'm not doing it all in one shot. So it is an exercise where I just constantly go back and forth, starting with blocking in the, uh, the overall body shading or sculpting the shape from, with coloring. And at this stage, I'm not too worried about the lines. I don't really path everything out because I know that there, after you paint the sketch, there's still gonna be um, adjustments so now I'm just kind of rubbing in the flange around the wheel. They're not perfect because the flange around the car is not just a flat plane. They help me to guide the overall impression and feeling. So my method might take some time because I don't plan out my colors and shading. I'm just building it along as I'm going. So at this stage, uh, you can see um, sort of the form in shaded way, uh, in shading. And now I am kind of going back in a way to, I'm not following my sketch lines. I noticed there are some, uh, I, noticed, I noticed that there is a little bit of, let's say, uh, refinement around here. The line sketch was quite rough and quite quick. And sometimes after I put in like a solid body color, I use the burn and dodge tool to first roughly just give it uh, some, some uh, shading from its natural colors, but now I'm using an airbrush to sort of sculpt in the shape of the body. So this first round, uh, it's usually just really rough <clears throat> using, a, using a lasso tool to to guide my shadings. So now I am just going back, turning off some of the layers, looking at my lines and use it as a guide to rebalance. Going back with the lasso tool to rework the 
darker areas. <clears throat> And sometimes when you think about uh, looking at a car in reality outside in the sky, if you painted a car as is, if it was reality, <clears throat> it's the, if you actually paint it the way it is, it's not as punchy or it doesn't have as much contrast. So a lot of times people paint the cars with really dramatic type of lighting, color, contrast to make it really pop and in this case if it's like a silver car then or a dark gray car everything facing upwards is going to get reflection of the blue but typically when you hit that light it becomes more of a darker blue if you observe the cars sitting outside and as you think about the uh, body, it, wherever it faces up, picks up a, a reflection of a uh, blue tint, and the surface is facing down, that's reflecting from the ground, gets a warmer tint. So in this case, as you can see, I am just uh, trying to play with some of the color because I don't have a plan for color actually I'm just splashing in some blue and later on it could change now I'm just lassoing in the under the surface that looks like it's facing underneath just darkening it So the lasso tool is quite helpful for you to block in the colors quickly. I don't spend the time to path it because when you once you path it, you have to stick with the path. And anytime you make an adjustment or you grow accustomed to pathing, then you will feel like you have to go back and change the path. Uh, I guess everybody have a different philosophy and approach. In this way, I roughly uh, rough in everything, and at the end of the video, you'll see that I'm just going back to refine the lines a little bit more. In this case, I'm using more of a violet type of color tone to shape the corner or shade the corner of the defenders. Now continue as you can see I am going back to fix the shape making it more dynamic because I want this shape to feel like it is disconnected from the body uh, disconnected from the bumper or the fender it's layering And now I'm playing with the color a little bit. I'm splashing a purple tint onto the the bonnet. So sometimes when you think about color, when you paint uh, an object, you want it to pop out a little bit more. Then you would use cool and warm colors. That really helps the contrast. When the eye picks it up, it'll feel more of a distance. When you play with uh, cool and warm colors. At this stage, <clears throat> I'm just applying uh, color to different, well, to the surfaces, and I'm still looking for the balance of uh, the color shades. And again, there are quite a few good tutorials out there on the internet that I've seen people do. They have a very um, thoughtful way of doing things. It's pretty cool in painting car or anything, I guess you pick up a little bit here from here and there and form your own style. 
someone else might offer a different type of tip and that you could use. So for me, shading like this corner fender area to get it right, it's all about, for me, it's all about spending the time. I'll go back build it and just layer it over and over and I find it that when you do such and so it's actually more rich and deep. So I think in, in, in a way I'm always trying to work with getting the darker, well not the darker in, but defining the shapes a bit more first. And here I'm sort of trying to put in this reflection by using a very light layer. I find it that when you build layers over, uh, suggests suggesting that there is a section there, just reduce the opacity and that really adds to the depth of it. So now I am all actually using a bit of warm color. And sometimes people will tell you that there is a certain way of doing uh, painting or car design coloring. But for me, I find it is, there is, a, there is some philosophy to it, but in the end of the day, you play with it and, and see what works with you best. And there isn't really a set formula how you gotta do. It is all about the seat time. The more you do it, the better you're at. You're gonna get at it. <clears throat> There's no replacement for displacement and there's no replacement for experience or there's no replacement for for the time and amount that you spend on on sketching. Um, as you can see now I'm playing with the path again. So at this stage obviously it's not still not uh, realistic. I am just mocking in for my own purpose to see where things are and I'm, go I'm going back to refine later. For me it's always more of a process that you kind of just go all around, go, uh, you go, well not in circles, but you kind of repeat this process over and over. And sometimes when you look at it too long, then you might want to take a break. So now I'm going back into doing the window reflection. So in this window reflection, actually, I have a mix of cool and warm color. So what I'm doing now is trying to put in the reflection for the windshield. And that also suggests the form. You can see many times when people sketch uh, an object or a car, it would have a reflection on one side. And what I'm doing is applying a bit of uh, blue tone to the top that's facing upward to the sky and then as it transitions down it is white but later I'm going to go back again and repeat this process so we are already at 20 minutes I am going to conclude this as part one I will make two more videos following for the entire process, part two and part three. Let me know if you have comments. Uh, let me know if this is going too slow for you or if this is all right or if there's any comments, please uh, leave a comment in below. And if you have enjoyed the video, please give me a like or if you'd like to see more, please subscribe. 
and we will conclude this as part one. Thank you very much.